Hi everyone, today we're going to make the final project in that series of five that I ask you to vote on. And it's going to be the one based upon this uh, little platter here. This is a reaction piece, so the glasses react. It had a, um, a theme of opposites. So we're going to make one using exactly the same reaction glass with a theme of opposites, same shape and with the same mould. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art, my name is Jeff, um, and I hope you're all staying well and safe out there. Uh, this COVID thing isn't going away in a hurry, and unfortunately I think we're going to have to live with it for quite a few years. Anyway, um, this project that we got today is going to be a very interesting project, given that it uses uh, reactive glass and um, has this strange theme of opposites. But um, I think you'll enjoy it, and we'll get into it very shortly. Now don't forget, um, ask all the questions you like down in the comments, please. I enjoy reading them and answering them, and any other comments I'd appreciate. If you like the video, hit the like button, and if you're new to the channel and you want to see more of these, to, uh, subscribe and turn on the notifications. Now this uh, little platter is, um, as I said before, based upon a theme of opposites. So we are going to stick with that and we are going to continue to use reaction glass. And if you've seen my video last week, you'll realise I did um, some samples in reactions. Now I'm going to be using those samples, or I should say, I've already used those samples to decide on the colours we're going to use today. Very shortly I'll show you the design that I come up with and uh, my reasoning behind it, and also my reasoning behind the colours. So we'll get on with this project now, and the very first thing is to talk about the design and the materials. Right, design. Um, before I actually get into design, I'll just mention that um, everything I use here, that is all the glass, is Bullseye 90. And um, if you're going to use Bullseye 90 or any other glass, and you're going to make something that you want to be food safe, just check your glasses, make sure they are food safe. Um, I'll be fusing on thin file paper, simply because it's the easiest, and I'll be slumping on boronitride for exactly the same reason. It's just simply a lot easier than using some kill mosh. And before I explain the design, um, I just want to go over those samples that I made last week. And... Um, how my uh, choice of colours come about. I did consider the um, vanilla and all the things that react on that vanilla, or at least all the ones I have. And I did consider the uh, Egyptian blue, which I don't think looks really nice. But I use vanilla a lot in reaction pieces. So I thought, no, I want to get away from that uh, and do something different. I did consider the teal green and the teal green with tomato red and even the oranges but that was just a little dark for me so I ended up coming back to turquoise and um, choosing the tomato red here which you can see in the background there. As far as the design I went through a few things on design um, it's going to be rectangular by the way, that's what 280 uh, long by 137 wide and that's because this piece is 137 wide and that fits into the mould I'm going to use. Um, I've come up with something like that where I was going to uh, put fret on it and decorate it and do all of that. Um, but I went away from that to a more geometric design. And the design I've come up with is basically we're going to have a piece of the tomato red, a piece of the turquoise. And across the middle here where they join, I'm going to lay up these little strips. Now these are all 6mm strips and I'm going to alternate them across the join there. This will all be put on 3mm uh, clear of course. And then at the ends, I'm only going to have just a strip just in from the edge a bit. Or I'm going to put like a full strip across the edge. I'm not too sure yet when I lay it up I'll look at it and decide which way it looks the better. I hope you'll agree this will fit into our opposites theme. I know they're not opposite colours as in black and white but they are opposite colours on the colour wheel which I'll just show you in a second. Um, 
and we are going to get some nice reactions going on here or at least I hope so. This is what I meant by opposites on the colour wheel. This is a colour wheel I used to just give me an idea which colours will work together and you can see that the uh, reds which is the tomato red up here um, is opposite the blues down here which is why they um, they just work well together. So next thing is I'll get on and cut up all the glass. So the first thing I'm going to cut is the clear base and I'm using 3 mil crystal clear here today. This is already uh, 280 millimeters long that way so I just need to cut up 137 which is right about there. Now I have to cut our red, which is already 137 mils uh, wide. So I need to cut it half of 280, which is 140. I've got all the glass cut and this is basically what I'm going to do. I've got the uh, tomato red one side, turquoise on the other, and then I'm going to have tomato red strips on this side, turquoise strips on that side. And I'm going to stagger the lengths of these, lay them right across that join so each strip will go over that join just a couple of mils. And then on the ends, I'm going to have a single strip of turquoise here and a single strip of uh, tomato red there. Now remember this is 3 mil strips on 3 mil on another 3 mil. So the thickness around here is about 9 mil. Now I am going to do a full fuse to flatten this out completely, which means these things are going to move a bit as it pushes the glass around. So while it's a geometric pattern in the end, I can guarantee it's not going to look nice straight um, edges but that's fine because we're also going to get the reaction between all of these as well so the end result is a little bit in the lap of the gods um, and I may have to cold work on the edges if it looks too uneven or it just doesn't look very nice on the edges I'm hoping it'll look good and uh, the edges yeah they'll be wobbly but uh, I don't mind that and um, if it's not not if we don't really need to do some cold working I won't and it'll then just go straight into the uh, mold. So I'll just go ahead now and I'm going to do a test layup and I'll cut all of these pieces to give me a nice staggered look across here. And when I'm happy with all of that, I'll clean it all up, put it onto our uh, clear base and get it into the kiln for a full fuse. I've got like an organized stagger across here. I say organized because it's not truly random because I do look at it visually to just make sure that it's uh, at least reasonably satisfying. I've also gone with just the straight strips on the end rather than the wider piece. Um, I tried both. I wasn't too sure about that, but I think the strips are better than the wider piece. I think it just breaks up a little bit more. So tell me what you think in the comments. I'd really like to know.
So we'll get this into the kill now, do a full fuse on it, and we'll find out tomorrow what it's like. Good morning, everyone. Well, at least it's morning here for me. Probably not for you. Well, there's our fused piece. And I'm exceptionally happy with that. I think it's per worked out perfectly for me. Um, I'm not quite sure what you expected, but uh, let me know in the comments if you expected something different. Um, from my point of view, it's got a nice organic shape with these little bulges on the side, which is what I expected. A little bit on the end and again I like that nice organic shape interesting the um, the pieces of uh, glass that we put in here we've got some nice little paddle shapes which is interesting you can see the reaction there around um, the tomato red and the turquoise here so all in all I'm very happy with that now it does have a little bit of divot on it. I think you can probably see it there. And um, I have to choose whether or not I want to uh, get rid of that. Now I think I will go ahead and put some clear frit on that and refuse it. Um, and while I'm doing that, the question is, do I correct these? Not that I think they need correcting, but do I grind all these down and grind it all square? Well, look. I'm not going to do that because to me it just seems wrong to have nice square sides with this uh, very organic um, center here. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to um, put some clear fruit on it and put it back in the kiln and tomorrow we'll have a final piece for the slump. The divot's gone and we've got a nice polish. So now let's just get this in the kiln for the final slum. I'm going to ask you a question. Is it turquoise on red or red on turquoise? In fact, it's actually both. But uh, visually, it would confuse you a little bit. Some people will take it one way, others will take it the other way. But it makes it a really interesting piece. Um, something that puzzled me at first, but I think I do understand why now, is why do we actually end up with paddle shapes? Um, when you think about it a bit, it's not hard to work out. Um, in the, you will remember that we laid up strips of turquoise, strips of red. But in the middle, they were up against each other. So that didn't allow them in the middle here to spread out. Whereas where it extended out here and out here, that allowed it to spread out over the base piece. And so we ended up with that... Um, paddle shape where we've got a, a narrow end 
on one side and the wider paddle shape on the other side. I like the effect and I've already got another uh, project in mind for that. And I think you can take that principle there and do a few things with it. Anyway, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else to say at the moment. If you've got any comments or any questions, please put them in the um, comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to watch a couple more videos, don't forget they're up there. The subscribe button there. Turn on the notifications if you want to see more of these. And until the next video, I'll say bye for now.